Yeah, I would say again, just personal experiences, and you know, um, it's really. Um, you know, I think that, that that is the empathy, right? Um, that once you've experienced something, uh, you find connection with other people that might be feeling that same thing. So um, Thea, I have bad news and it's not you. It's uh, technical difficulties. They were telling me at the studio back there. So um, we're rejoining live. So okay. we do have Thea Montañez with us who I um, stole time from her um, 300 um, cell phones and you know 500, I don't know, emails and so on and so forth. So we're back online for those who are texting and saying, I can't see her, I can't see her. So you got some people who really care about you. Um, mi pregunta para ti era de dónde sale ese amor que ella tiene para la comunidad inmigrante. Yo sé que ella lo hace um, no callada porque piensa que tiene que ser callado, sino porque necesita la atención que lo necesita. Y a veces uno se siente invisible y ha visto a la familia de uno ser invisible y ha visto familiares que nos quieren muchas veces ser invisible. So, la trayectoria de una persona que sea invisible, ella se relaciona con eso. How does it feel to be invisible? Lots of my trainings, I tell people all the time, that's why I do them. Because when I got sick, I became invisible. Mm -hmm. And there's not a worse feeling than you kind of flagging down in the highway, if you will. Yeah. And yeah. the cars are passing by. This is what I tell people in the trainings all the time. And, and you're like, can they not see me? And you're in the middle of the road. You feel like they're going right by you um, and over you at times. And so it's it's very, very, very hard. We continue with Tia Montañez, Chief of Staff of the City of Hartford. Tia, tell us something we don't know about your childhood that we probably go, ah, oh, me too. Wow. I Do can not speak bad about your mother because I ain't handling that. You're on your mm. own. Oh, no. No, 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 I would <laughs> never go there. Um, Let's see, what can I tell you about my childhood? Uh, there's lots of things. Um, you know, as a child, I was really curious. Um, I was always uh, reading. Um, I loved to read. I probably, you know, um, I was either at home at school or I was at the library. I spent hours and hours in the libraries just reading. Um, you know, I loved to write. Uh, I, you know, found not too long ago these journals that I had when I was just a little girl. And, you know, I used to write quite a bit. I used to, you know, um, a lot of storytelling, a lot of, you know, um, fiction. Um, but, but yeah, so I, you know, there was definitely a creative uh, side to me when I was younger. And, uh, you know, I, I wish I could spend more time doing that right now. You know, it's more so operations and operating, you know, the day to day of the city. Uh, but there certainly was a big part of me when I was younger that loved to sing and dance and, you know, do all of that. Yeah. Sing and dance. Yes. Lots of singing and dancing. Yes. I was very theatrical when I was younger. Wow. Yeah. I could not see the side of you. I might have to have you do that one time for us. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, hell no, you ain't going to make me well, do that. That'd have to be one. over a happy hour or something, I think. Yeah. Oh, I like happy hour. I, I like happy hour very much. Thea, tell us about where do you see yourself? And if you were to leave the position that you have, who is the perfect person and not a name? Okay, just your creation of who's the next person. Who would you love? You know how when I leave a job or I leave a project, I always pray in my belief. I hope that the next person that comes is smarter than me, knows more about this, uh, um, is less intimidated by this, um, knows more about that, so on and so forth. What does yours yeah. look like? Yeah, She's so not leaving. That's not what I said. <laughs> So who my successor would be, um, you know, um, it has to be somebody that loves this city, right? Not just any city, but specifically the city of Hartford. Um, you know, I think it's somebody that has to have a passion for, you know, community. You know, somebody, um, I think it would be interesting, somebody who necessarily isn't someone who has worked in government their entire career, which there is nothing wrong with that. That is very helpful, right, to have that experience. But I think it's also interesting to have people 
that may not have always worked um, in, in that particular industry, because oftentimes they come with different ideas and perspectives. And I think that's really important, right? Um, when you're trying to do different things and create change. Um, so, um, but I think first and foremost, it has to be somebody that loves this city. Um, yeah, I, I think that's the starting point. What's the love of the city look like for you? Because for I think we all have a different definition. Todas nosotras tenemos, o todos nosotros tenemos una definición um, diferente. Y ninguna de nosotras podemos terminar este cáncer que nos afecta continuamente. Y es un cáncer que todos los días nos podemos reunir, todos los días podemos llorar si queremos llorar, todos los días podemos reírnos, que yo espero que podamos. Por ahí está Anita Valentín, um, que que yo lo hago mucho con Anita because I love her and I trust her and I find her one of the most talented um, women out there um, as well and supportive. Um, una de las cosas que Ana me enseñó a mí es que ella le sorprendía mucho que yo la llamaba para saludarla y decirle que la quería mucho y que no necesitaba nada. And she was always like, Segura, I'm like, yeah, this is my debut. I care about you, and I'm glad you're on the earth, and you know, so on and so forth. Um, and ella me enseñó a mí que eso para mí era normal. For me, it was normal, yeah. but for others, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Which is very, very interesting. So, what is Mali Rosado is there uh, with you? Hi, Mali. Uh, um, Ana is with you. Carolyn Abramo, Elsie Esteves, which is my mother. Lord, oh, Ana help me. Oh my gosh. Ana Valentin, yeah, my Anita. That's what I call her, my Anita. Um, so there's a lot of people in the city that know your name. I have happened to have conversations with you that are very kind and generous. And um, quiero que la gente sepa un poquito más de cuánto tú nos has ayudado en Lily Sin Barreras. Y cuando hablo de Lily Sin Barreras, hablo de mí. That was one of the Thea, Thea's face when I, she said, and who's your staff? And I, this is it. She's like, oh, you have five? I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> this is hand. She goes, what? Um, because it's a movement. Pero Thea nos ayudó mucho a entender el proceso en la ciudad. And sometimes we need to understand that it doesn't matter um, how much we think we know. It's a matter of what do we really know? Mm -hmm. That to me is the, the most important thing in the world. It's like, who has the knowledge? And I don't care where you come from. I don't know. I don't care that you're from here, from there, wherever. Just tell me. And you were really good at walking us, and because I was not the only one, through the process. You also were so kind that when I called an emergency meeting because we were sheltering people, Thank God, due to uh, Father Tom yep. at St. Patrick's St. Anthony. And I said, yeah, I can't continue to do this. And you said, what do you need to do this? And let's figure it out. Um, all of those conversations were just like that. We didn't have five 10-hour meetings. We didn't have 100 emails going back and forth. Um, lots of the emails I answered in the kitchen. You answered, I don't know, a gazillion hours. Um, How do you keep yourself humble, although you know you have this amazing, very, very powerful seat? Let's not lie. You do have, and you've earned it, so let's applaud that. How do you keep that humble? ¿Cómo te mantienes humilde sabiendo que tienes ese poder en las manos? Sabiendo que sí puedes ser arrogante si lo quisiera hacer. Um, it doesn't seem like it's in your nature. Um, pero como, how do you maintain yourself humble? Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting because people will often say what you just said, you know, this really powerful position. And um, it is an honor of, you know, of, of my career to be in the position. But I, I've never thought of it that way. Um, you know, I, I truly believe that all of us at any level, you know, at the city of Hartford, there's a total of 1500 city employees and oh. everything that we do and everything that each of those 1500 people do is important, right? Like we can't do one thing without the other. 
So, you know, I don't think of it as being in this powerful position. I think as a collective, right, we are a powerful workforce, right? Um, but I don't, I've never thought of myself in that way. Um, how do I keep myself humble? I, you know, a lot of it goes back to my family. Uh, my parents, uh, both of them are in the area. And, um, you know, I see them at least two or three times a week. I talk to them almost every day. Um, you know, my father, my, both my parents migrated to the United States uh, from Puerto Rico. Um, my father um, has a you know very limited education. Um, my mother the same, and um, and yeah, I you know they're always you know my my uh, my point of reference. I, I always think to myself, you know, how would I want my parents to be treated right at this moment? And so you know, when I do end up getting a phone call or an email or somebody that knocks on our door, you know, I think to myself. What if that was my mom or my dad or my brother? I hope somebody would take the time to listen and to try to help. And so that's kind of, I think, um, you know, how I've been able to stay focused um, and um, regardless of the position um, and, um, and stay grounded really is what it is. Um, and I, I think it's really because of, of them. Wow, what a beautiful message to your mom and dad. Um, I'm the mother of a 32-year-old. Y si mi hija dice esas palabras de lo que yo le he enseñado a ella y que la mantienen humilde y que la mantienen derecha en saber que al final del día todo esto es parte de un resumen. Es la calidad de vida que has vivido. So congratulations to your parents. I almost want to cry because I hope one day. If I keep um, talking about them, I will start crying. <laughs> um, so I'm going to like, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I, but they're good tears, are they not? They are, you know, I'm so grateful. You know, my dad is 86 and, uh, and my mother is in her 70s now. And, you know, given everything that's happened this year with COVID and the number of lives that were lost, especially those persons that were older, um, you know, I am so grateful to God that both of them, you know, were, are healthy. They've both been vaccinated um, and uh, throughout this entire year, you know, I was able to stay connected, which was such a gift. Um, and I think what, you know, the thing I'm so grateful for is, you know, to be at a point as an adult where, you know, as their child, I am able to take care of them, right? Recognizing that they cared for me, right? It's that whole circle of life. Um, so, and it's interesting because as an adult, I'm getting to know them in a way I didn't as a child. Right. So when you're younger, you know, you just, you know, they're your mom, they're your dad, they're your parent. There's like this power dynamic, right? They are this authority. Um, and as I've gotten older, it's a very different situation where I'm getting to know them as individual people, right? And so it's a different kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just made me appreciate them more just as individual people and not from this perspective of, my mom or my dad, but just like who they are at their core. Yo quiero traducir eso, Sofía, porque te digo, cualquier madre, cualquier padre, cualquier hija deben de escuchar esto porque yo me siento igual. Mi papá uh, eh, tiene 77, cumple 78 años. Lo amo, lo adoro. Papi es the hottest of the hottest. Mi papi chungo. Uh, my mom is the coolest of the coolest. I got the best. You know, I got this disciplined mother, militant. You know, this is how we work in the world. And this is how, then I got mi papi chulo, who's he's like, let's, vamos a buscar la música y vamos a ver. Todo el mundo come and, you know, whatever. So I got these two um, great examples. But I, too, agree with you that uno llega al punto en de la vida de uno si papá Dios te bendice, si la energía te agrada, si, you know, todo esto funciona, de ver a tus padres como seres humanos y no como aquellos, eh, aquellas personas que tenían toda esta autoridad sobre ti, ¿verdad? Y uno como que se resistía o a lo mejor no sabe tanto. Ahora uno los mira como diferente. Les doy un ejemplo. El otro día mi hija, ella tiene 32 años, yo estoy muy orgullosa de mi rubia, y me dice, mami, las manitos se te están arrugando. Mm. Y para, 
para ella ese era un momento bien triste, porque ella está viendo que su mamá, al igual que todas las otras mamás, a pesar de que yo tengo cuánta crema usted puede mencionar, you, you, you ask me for cream, I have it. The creep of race, though, don't drop the nudge to one. The Jennifer Lope, I got it all. I'm going to fight this thing as much as I can with grace. But to watch my daughter hold my hand and say, Mira, mami, las manos te están cambiando. She was looking at me differently. Yeah, yeah. It's a very different relationship. And I have that relationship with my mother and with my dad as well. Mm. As, you, as you are literally in a position to mentor others by your doing, by your being, by your walk. It's not something you can really run away from, right? Because there's Tia Montañez and she has this job and she's been here and she's been there. So you, you kind of a trailblazer for many, many other young women who are now looking at you and going, how did you, how did you, how did you? Um, what is the advice that you would give us as mothers? Nos estamos acercando al mes de la mujer, de la mamá, which I argue is 365 days a week. Um, ¿Qué le dirías tú a mamá, a, la, a las madres? ¿Qué, what can we tell our daughters that will really echo with them? Because that's what I tell my daughter all the time. Whatever I say, I hope some of it echoes with you for the rest of your life. It turns yeah. into that thing in the back of your head that always says, You can do it, mommy. You can do it. You got this. You got this. Yeah. What would you say mothers can do? Oh, there's so many things, um, actually. Yay. Um, yay. I think a couple of things. I think, um, you know, we still, as a society, you know, we have certain um, beliefs in the things that women should do. And, you know, um, and part of that, you know, is, you know, these traditional gender roles, right? And, um, and in some ways we have made some progress and in a lot of ways we haven't. And I think in speaking with younger women, one of the things that I, in fact, I was, you know, with a college student just this weekend And she was talking to me about her experience um, within her own family and this immense pressure she feels to get married and have children. And, oh, and you know, it's interesting. Um, I myself am now in my early 40s. Um, I am not married. I do not have children. Uh, and I love this life that I've, you know, created for myself um, and, you know, And it's not because I don't love children. I absolutely adore them, but I also really appreciate, um, you know, my independence and I really appreciate, you know, my career and being able to focus on that. Right. And so, you know, I think one of the things that can be really helpful, you know, to encouraging um, or supporting young women is to remind them that there's not a necessarily, you know, a specific path, you know, not everybody is going to to have the same experiences or want the same things. Um, and that doesn't mean, for example, if you choose not to have children as a woman, you know, that doesn't mean there is something wrong with you. That doesn't mean you are flawed or you were damaged or that you don't like children, right? That just means that you've made a different choice. And so I think, you know, many times we ourselves as women put pressure on ourselves. But I think one of the most challenging things in, in, in speaking with other women is sometimes the pressure we put on each other. Um, and, you know, and again, and, and fitting in these traditional roles. And so, I, you know, I really encourage, I mean, life is, life is tough enough. There is enough stress, right, that, again, we put on ourselves or others put on us. But I think it is a relief when I talk to young women and, and remind them that it's okay, you know, that you don't necessarily have to do these things, um, that there are different ways to go about it, uh, and that's okay. You know, that, it's, that is amazing that you say that because when I, um, I have one biological child, I've been blessed with two stepchildren who I adore, but I had one biological child. 
And people would always say to me, ¿cuándo vas a tener el próximo? ¿Cuándo vas a tener el próximo? ¿Cuándo vas a tener el próximo? Yeah. Um, sin saber cuál era la situación ni nada por el estilo. But that's not what something I was looking for. So la pregunta que yo le hice a ti es, ¿qué podemos hacer nosotras las madres? Para que seamos el eco siempre, apoyar a nuestras hijas, a, aún a nuestros hijos. Men don't have to fall into that too. Yeah. Si no quieres yeah. tener niños. No tienes que tener niños. Si quieres estudiar para el resto de tu vida, estudia para el resto de tu vida. Si quieres viajar, si quieres disfrutar tu vida, lo puedes hacer con niños o sin niños, pero con la decisión que sea tuya y que la sociedad no te designe esto. Pero hay algo que tía dijo que para mí es vital, vital, y por eso lo estoy traduciendo, es la presión que nos ponemos la una a la otra. Sisters, if we are honest with one another, we are brutal with one another. Woof. We are brutal with one another. I'd like to see a lot more clapping, a lot more calling each other and going, go girl, I cannot believe, wow, look at that. You know, how can we support you? Um, you know, we're so proud of you, so on and so forth, because nobody can sit in anybody's seat. My grandmother, yep. you always used to say that. Yep. Mamita, tu silla es tu silla. Nadie te la quita. Yep. And it's so true. Yep. We all have a journey of ourselves. Yep. Um, let me continue to speak to our sister, Tia Montañez, who's honored me here at Lily Sin Barreras. I told you a little bit of what she's done um, with Lily Sin Barreras. Um, Tia does check in with me out of the kindness of her heart every once in a while, if she sees something, hears something, um, to see how she can help us. But I think the most important thing is when you find someone that you think, I'm glad I met this person. I'm glad I met this person. Y yo creo que eso es bien importante que tengamos en nuestra comunidad. So this is how old I am. I was going to say Rolodex. <laughs> How many of my sisters even know what a Rolodex is anymore, I right? I totally remember the Rolodex. I should bring the Rolodex back. Right? Um, pero tener en sus contactos alguien con quien usted se pueda tomar una taza de café o llamar, even if they say, Lily, you are nuts. You're going about this the wrong way. Tia has said that to me. Not in those words, because she's too kind. She's like, ¿Qué hace? ¿Para dónde va? I'm like, oh, I'm Lily. going through the door. Tell me left or right, but I'm going to get in that door. She's like, oh, God, let's let's talk about this. Um, because we all have our personalities and we all have our experiences. Mm -hmm. I think that we're all advocates. Hi, Rebecca Slater. Uh, we're all advocates in our own seats. And it doesn't matter yeah. how old we are. Yeah. How do we, in the city, let's go back to the city. In the yep. city of Hartford, we have a pandemic. I, I've been vaccinated. My husband has been vaccinated. My parents, although my mommy is in Puerto Rico, uh, majority of our, our, of our family has been vaccinated. I am a believer that whatever chance I can get to survive this demon, I um, had COVID. My husband had COVID. Um, his was a lot more severe than mine. Um, I'm a frontliner. You guys all know that I'm out there. Yeah. Um, but he was working from home and, and I had lots of guilt feelings about, did I bring it home? Did I, you know, did I do this? Did I do this? Yeah. And um, luckily I had really good providers and they were like, no, this can happen to any of us, but we want to avoid it. The city of Hartford is very clear that we still need to use our mask as it, the president of the United States is saying. Yeah. Um, Thea, how... How can we support what the city is doing now? ¿Qué hacemos nosotras como mujeres? Vamos a escandalizarnos nosotras como mujeres. What can we continue to do to support one another, to mobilize community so we understand what voting is all about, so we understand um, when we should be going to a meeting, a city council meeting? What's our job? I mean, there's so many trainings that you always tell me about. You're like, Lily, there's a training for this? There's a yeah. training for that. Yeah. Um, how do we do that as women? Yeah. Do it that's, better. <laughs> that's a great question. You know, I, you know, I think a couple of different ways. I think, again, I go back to finding your tribe in that village. 
and, you know, talking to friends. And I think starting off by telling your friends that you're interested in doing more in the community and figuring out what they're doing. And is there an opportunity for you to get to connected to some of the work that they may be trying to do? Um, and then from there, you know, you start making connections. And so maybe it's an introduction to someone you've never met before. Maybe it's an invitation to go to a meeting, whether it's at City Hall or maybe it's in the community. So I think the first thing is to let people know what it is that you are interested in doing. I think sometimes we assume that people know, right? Like, isn't it obvious that I, I was interested in doing it? Um, and that's not necessarily always the case. So like the first thing is to actually express what your intentions are, right? And be really specific about this. You know, so if you and I were having a conversation like, Lily, I'm really interested again in, in doing more work within our local immigrant community, right? And so by telling you that you're somebody who is very well connected and asking your help to help me get connected maybe to others that are doing that work. So I think that's the first thing. You know, I think um, here in the city of Hartford, um, there's lots of different ways to get connected, right? Whether, you know, whether it's through the neighborhood revitalization zones, the NRZs, every neighborhood in the city has one. Um, if you want to get to connected, you know, to them, please call, you know, 311, which is the city of Hartford's um, free line that you can call Monday through Friday eight to five, you know, and uh, ask, you know, with, you know, what is your NRZ and we'll be more than happy to connect you to them. Going on to Hartford.gov, we are constantly sharing information on the city website about various meetings and things. There's a ton of different groups that have organized themselves on Facebook, right? Um, so that's probably uh, an easy way to get information to understand who's doing what where. Um, but I think there's nothing more powerful than just conversation and talking to people. You know, to me, that's been the most effective way of trying to learn, again, what's going on in the community and who's doing what and maybe where can I help? Um, I think the other thing is don't underestimate your value, right? So I think oftentimes we have an interest in doing something, but we underestimate, you know, maybe certain skills that we have. And so we kind of talk ourselves out of something, right? Like, oh, I want to help work on this issue, but I don't have experience in doing that specific thing. You don't always need experience in that specific thing, right? You know, sometimes you may have certain skills that are helpful with anything, right? So again, don't underestimate yourself. Don't make assumptions. Don't assume that there's not a way that you can help um, without having, you know, that conversation first uh, with folks. So, um, Thea, no surprise, you have a lot of love here. Um, and, oh, this um, is so uh, great. <laughs> uh, I told you it was going to be good. So Everybody's nice like, oh, my God, so what are you going to ask me? What are you going to ask me? I'm not, I, I'm oh, interested yeah, in people. So, yeah, I'm seeing all these names. Oh, right. so See, great to I, want, I want people to have a space. Que tengan un espacio de conocerse el uno al otro. De saber que a veces no estamos en el mismo lado del argumento, pero sí de la misión. So I always try to separate that for people. Yep. We may not be and looking eye to eye to each other on a particular argument or issue, but our mission is the same. The how-to may be different. That's absolutely the how-to may be different. Yep. Yes. I can't stress that enough. And I see that a lot in doing work in community. Everybody has different roles to play. And one role is not more important than the other. We need everyone right so you know but we have different ways of doing it and i you know and oftentimes we may not agree but i think mm -hmm. that's when we can respectfully agree to disagree and the thing that we all have in common is how much we love our community and i think that is one of the things i am most grateful for and being in hartford is i've i've never experienced more people that care as much about their community there is so much passion in this city there are people that have been fighting this fight for 40 and 50 years and are still showing up at city hall and are still going to community meetings and you don't always again find that everywhere so again we may choose to do the work from different places we may choose to do it in different ways but the good news is we care about the same people 
right? So how do we find ways to work together to, again, support those same people that we care about? Yo creo que es vital para nosotros, hermanos y hermanas, unirnos y ser el eco. Be each other's echo. Mm -hmm. We don't, and here's, and, and I will take responsibility for everything I say on the Missing Barreras, okay? What the biggest challenge that I confront all the day is the boxes. Mm. People want to put you in boxes. Yep. Lily, I thought you only worked with the Puerto Rican families. Lily, I only thought yep. you worked with the homeless folks. Lily, I only thought you worked with... No, the, my mission is to remove barriers to access, to service, yep. right? To knowledge. That's my mission. It calls me in different areas and not all projects have a long life. Mm. And that sometimes is difficult for people to understand. Mm -hmm. They're the same loving Hartford people. I live in Bristol. 250 Putnam Street used to be our address. Okay, um, I grew up majority of my life in Puerto Rico, pero mi papá me hizo amar a la ciudad. Las mejores oportunidades las he tenido yo en la ciudad de Hartford, trabajando para agencias muy, muy llenas de pasión y compasión. I went to the non-traditional agencies like the Connecticut Women's Education Legal Fund. <laughs> uh, not many Spanish-speaking people, I was it. Uh, not many Latinas, I was it. Um, not many crazy people, I was it. Um, and we got to do wonderful things, but I got to be mentored in ways that I probably would not have had a chance otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, aquí tenemos bastantes personas. Eh, Yesenia García enviando saludos. Marisol, we, we, can, we can all help with within the communities by serving. Take the first step. Marisol says, and she is a great volunteer. Um, esta mi mamá, mami, te amo muchísimo. Yadira Yetier. Um, she's a great, great person to be connected to. She's always inboxing me and saying, I have this, I have that. Margarita González, si quieres los mejores planes. Coco, que es, I'm not joking, girl. No, I I'm know you're you. hungry. I, I, I'm telling you, coco, queso, vainilla. I'm like telling you, it's just like, don't eat for a week because you don't need to. That's it. Stop eating. Marita Pagán está con nosotros, mi compañero de vida. Uh, Rosa Flores, gracias por estar con nosotros. Rebeca, uh, ahora Alvarado, quien no conoce ahorita. El Dai, si no conocen ahorita, te dicen a la, a la tarea de ahora Alvarado. You know, you got to know ahora, man. You got to know, Ana, está mal y rosado. Um, que it was one of the people I put pressure on. And I said, Tia's coming on. And she's <laughs> she said, I don't do that. I'm like, well, Tia's going to do it. Talk about peer pressure, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. No, the both of us. Yeah. Don't do so, this. Well, I don't do this very often. but You don't. So I was I was very honored. Tia, ¿qué podemos, what, what should we be looking at um, for the upcoming year? What would you, if you had the magic wand? I know you don't have it, but if you do, please use it. Um, for the upcoming year, como mujeres, let's let's put aside the city, yep. your position at the city. Yep. You are a city native, so there's no way you can take that out of your blood. Trust yep. me. Yep. Um, what would you like to see women grow into or come back to? Yeah. You know, to ourselves. Uh, I, I think at a very young age, we are led to believe that we have to, again, do certain things and be certain people and serve in certain roles. And I think, you know, I, I wish for all of us this freedom, um, you know, to do the thing that our heart guides us to do and not necessarily the thing that we think we're supposed to do or we're made to feel that we're, you know, required to do. Um, this year has been so challenging, again, because of the pandemic. It, it has been devastating um, in many different ways. It's taken a toll on our emotional and, and physical and mental well-being. You know, I think women um, always end up doing more, but especially during this past year, right? Many women 
had to figure out ways to care for their children because now their children were no longer in school and, and figuring out a way to care for your kids while they're home, while you're also trying to work remotely, or maybe you can't work remotely and you still have to show up every day, but you have to find someone to care for your children. You know, recognizing many of us are taking care of our aging parents, right? And trying to keep them safe and protect, pro, uh, protected during the pandemic. I, you know, I think, um, life can be challenging and stressful enough as a woman, but then adding on this additional layer of this pandemic and what that meant for us and then the additional responsibilities um, that we had to carry. So I would, you know, and then I think naturally we put everybody before us. Um, and so, you know, for this coming year, I, I really pray and I encourage all of us as women to take more time uh, to restore ourselves and our spirit and our physical and emotional and mental well-being and, um, you know, self-care. You, you, you've heard that term a lot and, and that can mean different things, to, you know, to different people. But again, figuring out how to carve out, you know, if it's 30 minutes a day or a week, like, you know, how do you carve out the time to do the thing that's going to restore again, your spirit. Um, so I encourage everyone to take time to think about that. You know, what is that thing? Uh, and I really, you know, encourage you to make it a priority and find a way to fit it into your life. Um, Thea, can you give us some examples? I'll start. Voy a dar dos o tres ejemplos. Yep. Um, para mí, la yoga es bien importante, pero es más para el espacio for me. It's yep. more about carving. Yep. I'm not good at it to the point where I would say, oh, learn from me. I yep. love it. Um, I'm not a runner. Yep. Um, it's just I feel like if there's not a gun to my head, there's no need for me to run. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm like, no running. I'll be the girl, you know, in the marathon, you know, with yep. her ice cream going, go the end, go the end. <laughs> you know, I'm just not a runner. I don't yep. I don't enjoy running. My husband yep. is a runner. Yep. So. Finding things that really speak to you takes time. Yeah. Right. So it's okay um, for us to say, esto me gusta. I que yeah. no me gusta. Yeah. Esto lo trate. Yeah. I que no me gusta menos. Yeah. Maybe I need to go back to that. I like that one a little bit more. Um, do you find yourself being able to do that? I do now. And it was something that I I figured out how to do during the pandemic, to be honest with you. Wow. You know, for the past five years, you know, um, I have been on call 24 seven. Um, you know, it is not a Monday through Friday, eight to five, you know, the city is living and breathing and it is 24 seven. And so, you know, it is constant. And um, you get busy and you get caught up and, you know, all of a sudden, um, you know, you become distracted or everything else takes precedent. And it wasn't until the pandemic that I realized how important it was to, to make the time, right, um, to, to do something for myself. And so I started taking walks in the park. You know, it's funny, you know, part of what I do in partnership with our Department of Public Works is maintain our beautiful parks throughout the city. And as much time as I have spent trying to, you know, maintain the parks, I wasn't actually enjoying them. So during the pandemic, I would go to Elizabeth Park once a week and I would walk. And for the first time, in, and again, in a really long time, I was able to appreciate just how beautiful the park is. Um, so something as simple as once a week walking around the park, right, um, makes a difference. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I think for me, making time now every morning to meditate, every single, you know, morning now, you know, I'm on my rowing machine, my indoor rower. Um, that's something, you know, I had, I bought that rowing machine two years ago. And for two years ago, it's been collecting dust in the guest bedroom, right? I would hang, I would throw my clothes over it. And then finally mm -hmm. I started using it. Right. And, and all of a sudden I have more energy and I feel better. So, you know, now it's something that I've started doing on a regular basis, but I'm the same person like yourself. I never, 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 you know, would have done that before. Um, but it was, it had to be intentional. You know, I, I had to, to make an effort and I had to schedule the time. And again, I think during this pandemic, I just recognized how precious life is. 
um, and how precious time is and you don't get it back and you get this one life. And, you know, um, uh, one of my favorite quotes is Mary Oliver, right? And she says, tell me what is the one thing you will do with your, you know, your beautiful and precious life? Um, and so I constantly ask myself that question every single day. Uh, and, you know, I think part of, you know, this life is, is ensuring that you're enjoying it um, and you're making time, you know, for yourself. Oye, es que la chica hay que traerla cuatro y cinco veces, hacemos un Zoom, una parada con ella, yo no sé, ella entiende español, so no se equivoquen, es que ya se siente más cómoda en su inglés, y eso es parte del respeto, eso es parte del respeto, ¿ok? Tenemos con nosotros aquí el representante, Gerardo Reyes, y Gerardo es un buen ejemplo de una persona que anda en la calle todo el tiempo, con su chaqueta, con sus pantalones, con su gabán, que si no el gabán, que si no la capa. I mean, he's out there. So he's a yeah. great example of someone who's in Waterbury and anywhere else that he can put his hands on to do good. So he's a really good person to do that. Tenemos un concurso. Lo tenemos que hacer, tía. Porque así es que se hace aquí en Lili Sin Barreras. Hay que dar cositas lindas, hay que, you know, y para que nuestras chicas y nuestros chicos, para excluir, excepto a mi esposo, he doesn't get to do any of this, ¿ok? <laughs> <laughs> Pobre hombre, he's married to me. Somebody should send them apology letters, no. encouraging <laughs> letters. <laughs> 20 years later, he's still here. Um, pero para todos ustedes, díganme, ¿qué fue lo más que le impactó que tía dijo. Mm -hmm. Hay dos premios de 50 dólares cada right. uno. Oh, yeah. Nuestros auspiciadores, Jeffrey Dressler, Carlos Montana, Diana Sánchez, que viene de Puerto Rico, they are, and this is what we're looking for. We're looking to continue to have this space. Continue to have this space, but we can't have this space um, if we don't fight for it. We can't have the space if we can't talk to one another. No podemos tener estos espacios y pasarla linda y pasarla rico. Um, y nos reímos, a veces hemos llorado. Uh, mucha gente quiere saber de mi historia, así lo hacemos. Y de lo que estamos haciendo en la comunidad. Pero recuerden, toda la batería tiene que ser recargada. Everybody's bar battery needs to be recharged. Yeah. And I think sometimes we ask ridiculous things of people sometimes. And we can see it in their eyes. They're like trying to keep it together. They're tired. Yeah. Let's send them a love note. So, ¿qué ha dicho Tía Montañez de la ciudad de Hartford? Que de verdad la ha tocado usted, que usted diga, ajá, ay, yo hago eso también. Oh, yo tengo que hacer eso. Díganme ustedes, ¿qué ha hecho? ¿Qué comentario ha hecho Tía Montañez o qué? No sabían ustedes de tía, que yo le conté en mi bochinche, porque así le llamo yo, <risa> mi bochinche. Los bochinches tienen que ser buenos, no inventados ni de mala sangre, buenos. So esos bochinches que le he contado son de cosas lindas que, que, que tía ha hecho por nosotros en la comunidad. Um, she continues to be one of my contacts. She continues to be, I mean, she actually, I hang up and she calls me back and says, I have a missed call from you. Who the heck does that? Um, so Bronin has done well, <laughs> and a lot of your staff does that as well. I must tell you, you, you have chosen well. I, I cannot You've got a finish. great team. You have, you know, Liani Arroyo over there, the yes. same way you have Elby Cruz Showman over there. You have Jadira over there. You know, like these are the ladies I've had the privilege to work closer um, with, and and they have been truly, truly magical um, to making things happen. So. You've done a great, great job at, at bringing on people. So, Angelica, ¿qué me ha dicho o qué te ha dicho tía? ¿Qué has aprendido en el día de hoy? Para todos ustedes que quieren saber qué estamos haciendo próximamente, lo estamos haciendo todos los martes hasta que papá Dios me lo permita, ¿verdad? Con esta compañía que nos ha hecho una donación muy buena que se llama Shelburne. Uh, y nos ha hecho una donación y fue una donación de 5 mil dólares con estas tarjetitas. Y con estas tarjetitas he podido comprar comida, ropa, zapatos, pantaloncillos, panties, todas esas cosas que la gente no quiere hablar, le mm. hace falta a nuestros hermanos. Y la razón por qué le digo esto es porque no todo el mundo es connected. Yeah. Not everybody is connected. People need IDs, people need clothes, people need... So the more of us are out there, the merrier. 
It doesn't matter who you're serving. I don't need an ID. I don't need a picture. I don't need any of those things because it just, that's just the way it goes for me. Um, so we have been able to do that. I wish I could sing the name that got me closer to that, but I'm not allowed to. I've been told I'm not allowed to. Um, y también my, um, my dear friend, Sarah Raskin, who's always, always, always um, looking for ways that I can be sponsored. But remember, every mission has an end. So today, Brenda Rivera, ¿cómo estás? Um, today we have into July to be able to continue with this movement. We are at 55 Bartholomew. I'm really working out of my truck. I know people think I'm crazy, but literally, if you watch the videos, I am working out of my truck. We have had our brothers and sisters from the Muslim community sponsor our food for the past three weeks. Um, they have done it for 12 weeks in the past and they will do it this week too. With that money, it gives me an opportunity to go buy shoes and underwears and all that kind of stuff and I don't have to buy a uh, food. But I must thank, le estoy dando tiempo a todo el mundo para que me digan, I must thank, aquí me quedo, uh, Joel, in the north end of Hartford um, for giving me an incredible price, which I know he's doing it from the bottom of his heart. There's no way. Um, he can make any money of what I make. <laughs> um, so he has been very kind and, and very generous. ¿Quién me dice que ha dicho tía hoy? Oh, okay, te lo envié en texto, me dice Carmen. All righty, let's see. Aww. Oh, tía, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> she's like what what is good um, um i never met dia before she is very pretty she looks like someone we should all know she sounds very smart but the fact that she loves and cares for her parents means she has god inside oh, wow. that i learned today Caramba. That's so beautiful. I don't know who said that, but thank you for that. I think God's inside of all of us, um, actually. So thank you for that. I do too. And then, of course, the minute somebody puts it up, then everybody. <laughs> Oye, aprendido que cuando más sola te sientes, aparece una persona a echarte la mano. Mm. Yeah. Look mm. at that. You did that. <laughs> so somebody was feeling... Oh, they learned that from you. That when they feel the most, the loneliest, somebody can come around and give them a hand. Yeah. Same way or another. How to stay humble. Oof, that's a good lesson. I think that's the most that's, life's most important lesson is humility. To stay humble. Yeah. Before we close, and I announce the winners. Um, the. Uh, Tell us the one thing that to this day, because you have a lot of journey yep. to this day that you look at yourself in the mirror that you can share with us, of course, that you go, yeah. my name is associated with that. Oh, wow. Oh, I don't even know how to no. answer that question. Um, you know, um, the, the thing that I, I think about um, the most um a couple of years ago, there was a little boy, he was 11 years old and um, he was outside and he was outside, it was very late um, and he, he was shot in the arm and he survived. And um, I remember it happening. I remember talking to the police department. I remember talking to the mayor and, and you know, he was only 11 and I started asking all these questions and I said, what happens when a little boy gets shot and um, they explain to me their process, right? The police department investigates and, you know, and all of that. And I said, but, but what else happens? Because, you know, um, that child needs help outside of law enforcement, like that baby's gonna need, you know, support. And how do we ensure that never happens to them again? And what I discovered is we didn't have a process for that. And um, I spent about two years uh, working in partnership with our Department of Family and Children and a bunch of really great organizations in the city to create a process 
so that if there was ever a young person who was a victim of violence, that aside from the police, that someone was asking them, are you okay? Is there something that you need? Is there something that we could be doing? Because, I mean, that is just like a really basic thing. And I could not believe that that was something that, not just Hartford, but I, I don't know if most communities have something like that in place. So it was that little boy that inspired me two years ago. And it's something that we continue to do and we're working on it and, and we're trying to strengthen that program. But that's probably one of the things I'm most proud of. Well, that's not small potatoes, my love. <laughs> Yeah, that's not small potatoes, and we are so grateful that you are there. Yo, sabes que te lo digo de corazón, te quiero mucho. Le, uh -huh. le pido al Padre Celestial que te so cubra much. siempre. So que te cubra siempre, 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 que donde quiera que vayas, hagas el impacto que tienes que hacer, pero que me dejes saber dónde estás para yo encontrarte. Yeah, you're stuck with me. You are stuck with me. And Lily, I have to say thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you do. You are one of the most selfless people I have ever met. And you have been a gift to me and this entire city. So thank you for being as kind and compassionate and loving as you are and supportive. Um, so, you know, thank you. And thank you to so many people that are participating, so many people in our community that are that are doing this work, either as volunteers or, you know, part of, you know, the work that they do every day. Uh, you know, I, I, I say as a city, again, we're so lucky that we have so many people that care. So, you know, the city is only able to do what we do because we have so many people that are caring in our community that want to help. So thank you, everybody, for everything that you guys do. Would you come back? I would love to come back, but only if we have, you know, maybe um, a, a happy hour kind of conversation. Girl, don't you worry. We can arrange for that to happen. So, para todos ustedes que están interesados a lo mejor en tener ese happy hour privado, lo podemos hacer hasta por Zoom y tener una charla con... Eh, Tia Montañez, Lily, continue success to you and yours. Thank you so much, Geraldo. Um, tengo que anunciar los ganadores. La razón por qué quería traer a Tia es so you could see her face, uh, you could hear her voice, and not just read her resume or her bio, because I think it just, there's no way that her bio can do justice to her heart and the work that she is doing. Uh, congratulations to Bronin for being smart enough um to hire someone who really carries the heart of the city and i know he does too um and he knows he has my respect so here believe it or not it's going to be saimar cruz all right and angelica so angelica recibirás tu premio saimar cruz recibirás tu premio dale gracias a Papa Dios que nos acompaña siempre aquí. Gracias, Puerto Rico, por siempre estar con nosotros. Próximamente traeremos a la doctora Figueroa para que nos cuente un poquito más de qué está pasando en Puerto Rico. Hemos tenido muchísimos invitados. Yo le pido a todo el mundo y a ti también, tía, que continúen apoyando al programa porque es el único que tenemos um, que es bilingüe y que no hace entrevista. Hacemos charlas y nos conocemos el uno al otro el uno al otro. Yo tengo la fe que algún día, algún día todos nosotros podamos hacer una parada de amor. Una parada de amor. Donde nos conocemos, donde aprendemos, donde jugamos el uno con el otro. So let's go back to our childhood almost and get to know one another. I don't yeah. ever want to grow up. That growing up stuff is just like not for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Te quiero mucho. ¿Qué mensaje oh, quieres dejarle al pueblo? Thank you so much. And thank you everybody that participated for all the loving messages. It really means a lot that uh, that people tuned in today. So thank you. So tell us what would be your favorite quote or thought to leave us with? Oh my <laughs> What can I say? Que mala. Um, que mala, ¿verdad? Que mala. Oh my gosh, the worst. You know, again, I go to Mary Oliver, right? Like, what is the one thing you will do with your beautiful and precious life? Um, and I think if you ask yourself that very question every day, it'll remind you, um, you know, of, of uh, the beauty that exists 
and how much you matter. And, um, you know, um, I hope it encouraged all of us uh, to do those things that sometimes we don't even think we can do until we do them. So. Un beso y un abrazo a ti a tu familia. Que Dios te bendiga, que Dios te acompañe, que el cielo siempre te cubra. So I, I wish that on everybody. Um, for those of you who send me questions all the time and want me to answer them, I will be on Instagram following this and answering all of those funky questions sometimes you guys ask me. All right. I love you all. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being here. And let's keep trucking. We have no choice. Bye, Thea. Bye, bye. everyone. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye. You too.